Hi everyone, Thrasher here. We're doing two things in this video. First, we're introducing the idea of a free body diagram. That's a visual to help us see all the forces that are acting on an object. And then after that, we'll look at one fairly quick and straightforward example of Newton's second law in terms of a specific problem for a certain object. These two things are linked because if we want to apply the second law, if we want to look at all the forces acting on something and use that to determine any kind of acceleration, well, it's crucial that we can see that we understand and we know at a glance what forces are acting on those objects. So free body diagrams allow us to show it. Okay. So first, part A, what a free body diagram is. It's a way for us to visualize all the forces on an object. And it's a standard, a conventional way to do that. For example, we're going to be seeing all types of problems involving boats and boxes and ships and rockets. I can't draw ships or rockets. I can't draw boats. I can't draw animals. But when it comes to free body diagrams, we don't have to. <laughs> Luckily, I don't have to. We'll just use a standard form of representing an object, and then we will be using arrows to show the forces that are acting on those objects. So a free body diagram does two things. It shows the forces acting on an object and what direction those forces are acting. Those are the two main things. There are some rules for drawing free body diagrams. You should jot these down. All free body diagrams start with you drawing a dot. You make a dot kind of like this, and that represents the object. This is what we're going to make instead of drawing a car, or drawing a spaceship, or drawing a cow, whatever the object is. All right? And then from this dot, we will draw arrows to show forces. If there was an arrow acting to the right on the cow, we would make something that looks like this. If there was an arrow also acting down on the object, whatever it was, you would go down. You always start at the dot and you draw away. You're not going to do like this. That's weird. Okay? You're always going to draw forces that are acting on those objects. And you're always looking at one object at a time. This is for one thing or cow or whatever. And you just keep doing this. You uh, draw these arrows for all the different forces. If you have multiple objects, you would draw multiple dots and draw then the forces acting on each one. This is something that you really learn just by doing. So let's just jump into our example problem, part B. Free body diagram example uh, along with setting up Newton's second law. So we have two friends that are moving a box. I have this friend here and this friend here. Let me flip over to a color pen. Okay, here's our box. Maybe it's a refrigerator. Maybe it's a large Amazon box. And they're sliding it to the right. They're moving the box to the right. Each is exerting a force, but there's also an opposing force. I kind of made it look like a carpet or something. There's some kind of opposing, you might call that a frictional force, that's going to act in the opposite direction. We want to do two things. Draw a free body diagram, and after we do that, try and set up Newton's second law. So let's start off drawing a free body diagram for the box. Okay, the first key idea, you're always drawing it for one object. So we're going to draw a free body diagram just for the box, not for the person on the right, not for the person on the left, just the box. So there's the box. I've replaced it with a dot. That's step one. Now I want to draw the different forces acting on the box. For example, this person here is tugging the box to the right, and they're using a rope. So I'm going to have a force going to the right, and because they're using a force, I'm going to call that a tension force. Okay, There's not really a rule in what you call it. Oh, well, look at this person. They are pushing the box to the right. So you might think, hmm, how am I going to represent another force to the right. There's usually a couple ways. I'm going to flip over to, to red here to show this pushing force. I usually kind of attach it to the bottom part here and call that P. 
Okay. Some people like they'll extend it. They'll like have this one force of tension like this and then a pushing force like that. That looks a little messy to me, but I've seen it before. All right. Maybe I could have made my dot bigger. So maybe I should have gone like this and make this dot a little bigger just so we can more clearly see those two forces. Can I make a, a nice decent circle? Yeah, that's okay. So now I have a bigger dot. I can see one force from this person, a tension force. One force, a pushing force to the right. Remember, those letters don't really matter, but they are two different forces. So you do want to make sure uh, you know the fact that they are two different forces. This box is also here on Earth. Don't forget, we draw all the forces. There is weight acting on this box. So I might call that W. The box is also sitting on the carpet, sitting on the floor. So there's some kind of normal force. Like that. Oh, and there's one force I forgot. It says in the problem there is a frictional force that's acting in the opposite direction to the left. Aha, I'm going to draw a frictional force like this. I'm going to do um, just force friction. We'll learn some more details about that frictional force later. But here's my free body diagram with all the forces. Tension pulling to the right, pushing force to the right, frictional force opposing it to the left, but there's also the weight force and there's also a normal force. Okay, I do not include the fact that maybe the uh, box is pushing down on the ground. I don't include that. I'm just drawing the forces on the box itself. Okay. Second problem. It says to now set up an example of Newton's second law in the x direction forces are vectors so just like we did for velocity and acceleration and displacement okay we're going to look at one direction at a time so i'm going to set up the second law just for forces acting in the x direction this is what the second law looks like it says when you add up all the forces it's equal to the mass of the object times that object's acceleration. When I set up Newton's second law, my first job is to write out the sum of the forces. Write out what all the forces are and set them equal to ma. And we're going to do this just in the x direction. So we'll use little subscripts again. The sum of the forces in the x direction is going to determine the acceleration in that same direction. Remember, these are vectors. So what forces are acting in the x direction? That's why this free body diagram is so helpful. We have tension and pushing force to the right. We have a frictional force to the left. Remember, it's important to understand our positive and negative directions. These forces, you could guess, they add up. That's why you have friends help you move things. You push in the same direction, those forces add together. Friction is an opposing force, it slows you down. So that's going to act in the opposite direction. Let's say to the right is positive, because that's what we've normally done. Well, let me just list out all the forces that are acting in the x direction. There's tension. In the same direction and to the right is the pushing force. But, uh-oh, we have a force that's acting in the opposite direction minus the force of friction. That is equal to ma. That's how we set up the sum of the forces. This is how we apply Newton's second law. We write out all the forces that are acting in a particular direction, the x direction in this case. We set it equal to ma. Normally, how I like to write these problems is I go, OK, here's the sum of the forces. I'm going to list them out. You'll see me use this colon all the time. Here's that list, all those forces, T and P and friction, what's acting in the opposite direction. That equals MA. So here's the sum of the forces. And by Newton's second law, this is what the sum of the forces is equal to, F. And then obviously this is just MA. Obviously, I didn't give you any numbers that we can plug into, but this is the strategy we're going to be using as we apply Newton's second law. Thanks for watching.